Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev. The weather is terrible today, so I thought what better than to do an SSIS tutorial. And in this video we're going to be looking at basic data flows. We're going to cover the following scenario. We need to create a file to pass for the payroll team for processing. So let's jump right into it and go through some examples. So I'm in SQL Server Management Studio now and we're just going to have a look at our timesheet table which is what we're going to be looking at for this example. So in this table we've got a TSID, not really relevant, um, but we are going to be using it, MPID which it relates to our employees, the date of the timesheet and also the hours that they worked on each day. So what we're trying to accomplish here is we need to get this data into uh, a flat file, a CSV, that's going to be imported into the payroll system and then they're going to process the payroll for this week. Let's head on over to Visual Studio now and go through uh, a basic data flow. Okay, so I'm in Visual Studio. This page you can see is SQL Server Data Tools, uh, which was introduced in SQL Server 2012. Prior to that, uh, you may have heard the term BIDS, uh, or Business Intelligence Development Studio. Uh, that's now been replaced by SQL Server Data Tools, which is what we're going to be looking at today. So what we're going to be looking at is a package that we can run that's going to bring that data out of our database and create a flat file for us. So I'm in the control flow window at the moment. Uh, you can see this project here is called payroll data and um, what I'm going to do is first of all onto our control flow window we're going to drop on a data flow task as we can see down the left hand side in our toolbox uh, we've got various operations we can perform within the control flow um, but we're going to be using a data flow task in this example so I'm just going to drag that onto our control flow window here so now we've got our data flow task and what I'm going to do is just double click on that if it responds which will open up our data flow window I'll just click on that for now so now we're in our data flow task at the moment it is called data flow task in fact I'll go back to the control flow and we should be able to rename this to payroll uh, we'll just call it payroll so if we double click on that we can see now the data flow task has now changed within our toolbox we've got various different items that we can use within the the data flow so we've got our favorites which is our source assistant and destination assistant common so common transformations other transforms and then if we scroll down we've got other sources and other destinations as well for this we're going to be using our SQL Server database as our source, that's where our data wants to come from. So I'm just going to drag on the source assistant and that's going to say where is the source, what's the source type and in this case we're going to be using SQL Server. And we're going to, so that's selected for us, we're going to select a new connection manager and click OK and that's going to bring up our connection manager so we need to create a connection manager that's going to allow us to connect to SQL Server now if I click on server name this does take a few seconds um, because I've named my machine something rather annoying I don't know it off by heart so I click on that to get the server name you can just type that into there now how are we going to connect to the server we're going to log on to the server using Win uh, Windows authentication and then we come down here we need to select a database name of course we're going to be using the bookshop and we can actually test our connection here that has succeeded so if I click OK on that we can now see we've got our source created for us 
Now we've got an error at the moment uh, to say a destination table name has not been provided. Uh, don't be concerned about this error at this point. So the error show you haven't even had the option to select the table and already it's saying you haven't selected the table. So we're just going to double click on that again. And now we can see a list of our tables. And in this case, we're going to be using the timesheets table. So I've selected that there. If I go onto the columns tab, these are our columns that we're going to be that we can, that are available in the table. If we didn't need all of the columns, we could simply untick the boxes at this stage. Uh, in this example, we are going to be using all of the columns. So that looks good. We've now got our table selected and the columns that we need. Now what we're going to do is create a destination for that. So this is only a basic data flow. We're not going to be manipulating the data. We're simply going to be taking the data from the table in SQL and creating a flat file with that. So I'm just going to scroll down now to other destinations and we've got the option of a flat file destination. As you can see down here in the bottom left hand corner, we do have a description of what that is, so writes to a text file, which is exactly what we want to use. I'm going to drag that onto the screen, onto our data flow, and we can see a connection manager has not been assigned to the flat file destination. So if I double click on that, you'll get an error at this point to say you've got no input because we haven't connected our source to our destination. We're not going to continue at this time. If we click on here, we're going to drag our arrow down. Let's see if I can get it straight. No. I always like it to be straight into our flat file destination. We've still got an error to say we haven't got a connection manager yet. We don't know where it's going. So again, we haven't got a connection manager. We're going to click on new, and it's going to ask us the format of the flat file that we want to create. We've got delimited, fixed width, fixed width row delimiters, and ragged right. In this case, we're just going to be creating a delimited file um, with commas. So we're going to click OK there, and then we can add a description. We could change the connection manager name, which will be useful. And we will be going through a lot more in-depth examples in other videos as well. So flat file connection manager doesn't really mean anything to us. If we had a lot of packages within this project, we wouldn't know what that actually meant. So it is always ideal to give it a name. We're not going to be going into that much detail in this video though. So now we're going to give it a file name. So we're just going to browse just to give the indication of where it is. It's going to be placed on the desktop and we're just going to call it payroll data. So we can see there that the file name has been populated. Uh, it's formatted it mainly for us, English United Kingdom. It's probably picked up the language from the local machine. Uh, the format delimited, text qualifier none, header row delimited, and we're also going to indicate that the column names are in the first row. As we can see, we haven't got anything in the columns at the moment. But if we just click OK on that and OK again, open that up, and now we've got the option for mappings. So we can see these are our inputs, which is from our source and then these are our destination columns. We're going to create them with exactly the same name. If I wanted to, I could edit those names. That looks okay to me. That's a preview of what it's gonna look like. There's no data in there at the moment. So we're just gonna click okay on that. So there we've got a simple data flow of us picking up data from our source, in this case SQL Server, and it's a table and we're going to be putting that data into our destination which is going to be a flat file called payroll data on our desktop. Now I have got the option now to actually start debugging so I could play this package see if it runs through correctly um, if I press that from the data flow it's just going to check that the data flow does that correctly on our control flow we've only simply got a data flow task so I am going to click that now just press play on that. It will open up the debugging. 
Now normally if you've got a large amount of data and it's processing you'll see uh, an orange circle here going round. Once it's completed you will see a green tick and there we can see that five rows have been passed to our flat file destination. So that looks to have worked successfully. We've got two green ticks which is great. Let's go and have a look if our file has actually been created on our desktop. So we're on our desktop now guys and we've got a file called payroll data. If we open that up we can see we've got the data input that what what exactly what we was expecting which looks good. We can now take that or send that to our payroll department who can import that into the payroll system um, and we can have a look at uh, and, uh, processing the payroll for these workers. So I hope you have enjoyed that video guys, that was just a quick introduction to um, an SSIS package, very basic, lowest level, we will be building in a lot more detail uh, and looking at some data warehousing as well, so we're going to be looking at some extensive processing within SSIS within other videos, but I hope that gives you a good grasp of how SSIS works. It's an ETL tool that allows you to extract, transform and load data and like I say we will be going into a lot more detail. Do check out my other videos on the channel. If you are interested in SSIS or SQL development, uh, learning SQL, business intelligence, do subscribe to the channel and hit that notification button as well. That will make you aware of when new videos are uploaded to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching.